Hello and welcome to this program, the National Tushal Conference Update with our Amerindian leaders. I will be your host for this program and joining me today are two of our Amerindian leaders. To my immediate right is Mr. Lee Williams. He is a Tushal from Parima Village in Region 7. And to, to his left is Ms. Shalon John a CDC chairperson from Dark Point Region 7, Lower Mazaruni. Welcome to both of you and thank you for being thank here and, and for coming on this program to, to share your concerns. So before we address the Toshao Conference itself and what's been uh, playing out over the last few days, we want to talk about some of the issues that are affecting um, your communities and more importantly the Amerindian community at large. So what we know for sure is that one of the most critical issues for Amerindians in our country is the protection of land title and extension of land title. Under the PPP administration they had left uh, 10 million US dollars in a fund to continue uh, issuing land titles and extension of land title. And since the coalition government came to office in 2015, um, not one single land title or extension of land title has been issued. How has this issue affected um, your communities and how, how, is, how does this issue affect Amerindians at large? I will start with you, uh, Mr. Lee. Yes. Well, so far, uh, Amerindian land titling project was firstly established under previous government and then after it was uh, for a whole for some time, even up to now, and there are some communities in Region 7 who have not yet received their title. Mm -hmm. And we, they have been having our community leaders back and forth with the Ministry of Indigenous Affairs, and then they have another unit, and now they have set up a land titling unit which is not functional yet. And having said that, the, the village leaders have been back and forth trying mm -hmm. to get their title land, but they departments are not doing effective job mm -hmm. to, to resolve this land titling project. So uh, we have to meet the president, sorry, the, the vice president, Minister of um, Indigenous Affairs, mm -hmm. Mr. Sidney Alika. He referred back to the unit, mm -hmm. and then th that's where the un if the unit doesn't have a copy of the extension or whatever, the unit referred back to the minister. That is how we have the leaders back and forth. So the, the issue of land titling is not resolved up to now. Okay. And uh, Ms. John, what about you? As for me, mm -hmm. I am not experiencing it because I'm fall on the township okay. of Bartica. And for the other two shows that are complaining and requesting, I think they should give the people the title mm -hmm. because they, we, are, we, we live in there. We know yes. the issues, right? And there are people who coming in and trying to bully us for for our own right. own thing. Mm -hmm. So that is that, that that is the reason why the two shows are requesting for the land title. And I mm -hmm. I am happy if when this PP government go back in power, they will solve all those problems and people who are requesting it will be approved. Right. Because you know, around the world in other countries, um, land title for indigenous people, they, 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 their lands are considered very sacred and you know yeah. the, our Amerindian uh, brothers and sisters are not privileged to that same type of, of treatment and, and protection um, yeah. under the law as around the world. Um, moving on to another issue. We Just before you move on, sure. um, under the land titling project before mm -hmm. we had our own people in the unit, the Amerindian people in the unit. Okay. And so that if when that was changed mm -hmm. and we have other people who does not know the area, okay. maybe that might be the the um, factor that is delaying the process because okay. they don't know the area. Right. They don't know the. So you need region. better representation. Better representation, people from those villages, so that they can say yes, this is our boundary. That is where we live, so mm -hmm. they, we can move forward faster. Right. Okay. Now coming to the issue of youth and youth unemployment. We know that since um, 2015, almost 2,000 um, young Amerindians lost their jobs 
um, after the community support offices were sent home. So we now have 2,000 uh, young people unemployed and tens of thousands of persons affected due to their loss of work in those communities. How has that uh, affected your community? Well, for me, the youth who were employed previously had an economic impact. They earned their income, mm -hmm. that the money was circulating in the community. Mm -hmm. After that was stopped, well, the youth of each village are now without jobs, mm -hmm. who are, who are um, not fortunate to meet that qualification to get other types of jobs that, mm -hmm. that they require. But the youth of, that are unfortunate, well, those not have a job to now, and the, the income that used to come is not there. And where I live in, Parima, is different from other villages. Other villages might depend on some other resources. For me, I depend on agriculture for mm -hmm. sustainable uh, living. Okay. But then again, the, the pricing of the, the agriculture product compared to the coastline is mm -hmm. very high because of the cost of living. Okay. The cost of living is very, very high and we, we cannot compare with, it, with the coastal product. Right. Even though we have an organic product we can showcase to the mm -hmm. market, there's no way that we can get it out because the cost is very high. And certainly, to. right, and certainly we know the cost of living has skyrocketed yes, over the, it, it, over the past, the past yeah. a few years, especially yeah. with, the, with the introduction of uh, on over 200 more basic yes. essential, essential items that drive up um, the cost of living. Um, Ms. John, what is taking place in, in your community regarding youth unemployment, cost of living, and so on? As for my village, there is no job for those who don't have qualification, I must say. Mm -hmm. And it only left to the young boys to go in the bush and work. And that, that is how, it, how things are right now. Mm -hmm. And things are difficult, yeah. real difficult. And for my young people, I would like, in my community, I would like, you know, they, they, even if you don't have the qualification, you could get a next, a next opportunity to go and do something, mm -hmm. right? But it is not there at the this present moment. Right, the so, all, all, all what you see when the day come, people walking mm -hmm. up and down the road, and you know, because there's nothing else they could do. Mm -hmm. So... And these, these, this I think is leading to, to all sorts of other problems, yes. like abuse of alcohol. Yes, abuse of alcohol, people stealing and people doing many things because there is no job, people have to live. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. So, so they don't have no job because the idling, they mm -hmm. tend to do something else in the community right. just to keep their mind occupied or whatever because of no job. Right. And uh, what about education? Uh, you know, this, this, this administration, the APNO AFC Coalition, um, they boast that education is very important to them, but their track record talks about something different. Their actions um, have hinted that education is not a top priority, even though they say that. So this is the, the administration that has put VAT on education. This is the government that has not built a single new school um, in this country. This is the government that has raised um, tuition at the university by over 35%. Um, we have teacher shortages all across the country, and they, you know, they talk about education being a top priority. Um, what, what is going on in your communities regarding education, and, and what would you like to see um, happen in that area? As regards to education, um, as we say, education is very important. In, it, in every society. But then again, this government seems to um, understand the geographical area where we live in. Mm -hmm. Even though they say they are connecting from hinterland to coastland, there's still a big gap. Okay. There are certain communities in my region who are still not access to um, education in a, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. By that I mean transportation is one. Right. Some children walk miles away to school every day. Mm -hmm. Some go by paddling. By, by river to just to attend school mm -hmm. because parents are committed they know education is important right. but then again the government has to see more further to, mm -hmm. to, um, to, um, to support our children right. because they're boasting about these these initiatives mm -hmm. but we in upper mass and um, district does not benefit from that these initiative right. and, and then, i was listening to 
um, minister, uh, Lieutenant Ministry of Marine Affairs, when she said that the school feeding is receiving $500 per each child, mm -hmm. and that was saving a lot of money for parents. But to my surprise, I mean, the, the school feeding is ongoing, yes, but each child is getting $175 per child in each school. Wow. But they, so that, that's a, that was a misleading of mm -hmm. five, getting $500. Okay. If that was the case, it should have been a better, you know, mm -hmm. but the 175 per child is still very small. Right, and you were just you were just talking, especially Shalon was just yeah. talking about um, you know th there are no uh, the persons are not qualified um, in the area to, to to seek a better job, and this is important. You know the education sector is important in order to get our people working, moving uh, moving up the, the, the ladder, and um, so access to education, access to resources, uh, the 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 ten thousand cash grant was removed. The uniform grant, the, the uniform materials grant has not been implemented over the last two years, which brought some some relief to the parents sending their kids to school. Shala? Well, for me, mm -hmm. education is important. And as Minister said, that they are doing a lot, but as for me, they are not. Yes. Because for me, as a parent, I have two children going to one going to the secondary, one going to the primary. Mm -hmm. And in the secondary sector, sometimes I find it hard mm -hmm. because to send a child to school, you have to find their lunch and everything, right? Mm -hmm. The money, and every day you have to find that money. And the books are very expensive, right? So. I don't think they are doing much, you know, they, they are not doing their work the way they talk mm -hmm. and maybe in individually if people should stand up and say, they might say that they are wrong, right? But we didn't have that opportunity to talk. Okay. Yeah. And what about the, what, what about the health sector? Um, how, how are the communities being affected by lack of uh, there are drug shortages, insufficient drugs, and, and so on in the, in the areas. Well, for me, in my community, I have a little help up. And there, we don't have anything. Have they, they built any new health centers in the area? Nothing. Areas? Everything that built was under the PPP. Mm -hmm. And up to this day, nothing has been built from since mm -hmm. the 2015 to now. In the Central Bartica, we have a big hospital, and when you go there, they have the right prescription mm -hmm. for you to go to the private to purchase okay. medication. Sometimes, bare Panadol they give to you, mm -hmm. and it makes no sense. And people can't afford, afford People can't afford it right now. high cost of living. We can't afford it. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to, to go to the private hospital. Because the private have everything and the public don't have any. Where is the public supposed to be providing for the people? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, that's it. Um, Lee, you were talking yes. before about agriculture being um, very important in your community. What assistance, if any, are you receiving um, in that regard? Well, as regards to agriculture, there's no input from Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. so far. Before, we use they used to get um, assistance through Ministry of uh, Amarin Affairs then. Mm -hmm. Chemicals, seeds, or whatever equipment mm -hmm. for the farmers that boost their farming activities. But okay. since then, there's no... We have to buy chemicals, we have to buy the seed. So all of this assistance has it, been yeah, removed? It, yes, removed from, mm -hmm. from uh, indigenous people from mm -hmm. benefiting. I know we can. We can have, I mean, um, as a farmer, you have to support yourself, but then right. again, Ministry of Agriculture has to have good input so that we can, you know, boost our agriculture activities. Right. So, if there is any Akushi ants infestation, we have to buy chemicals. Mm -hmm. The agriculture personnel there uses own resources to carry in chemicals, and we have to buy it from the person, mm -hmm. even seed. And this uh, this affects your your production yes. as well. Yes, and, and over the years we've been complaining um, mm -hmm. about farm dis the, um, being destroyed by wild animals, mm -hmm. and we seek some kind of uh, food relief, but that, that, that was not heard. Right. 
It's almost as though the Ministry of Agriculture doesn't exist because, you know, you never hear no. um, from the Minister of Agriculture, you never hear him speak at all, um, no. uh, much more put forward a plan on, on, on how they will improve the agriculture sector. Because it seems as though um, the coalition is just waiting on, on oil to, to solve all of Guyana's problems Perfect. and to solve all of its own, its own problems. And you know, you had the minister Keith Scott get up in Parliament and say that the Amerindians are greedy, um, yeah. you know, for 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 wanting assistance and wanting their land title, something that they're that you are entitled to. So you know, that is what we have to 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 deal with from this administration. How does that make you feel, you know, as a as an Amerindian, and you hear your one of the ministers say something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's real disrespectful. To the Armenian people, especially the remarks made by Keith Scott when mm -hmm. he called us greedy. We are not greedy. We sustain our forests. We, mm -hmm. we conserve our forests in our own way. And then again, um, if we have to listen to those kind of remarks and just don't say anything, we're still not moving anywhere. Right. And as regards to the oil, I, I happened to listen to Minister of Natural Resources this yesterday, but there was nothing beneficial that the indigenous can get mm -hmm. and there was no detailed presentation how they intend to use the resources for the indigenous people. The resources people. to benefit yeah, the, the indigenous people. people. There's okay. not the Armenian community, there's nothing of that sort. They're so, just talking that the oil money is coming uh -huh. but we don't know, we're not sure how the Armenian will so benefit. So there are no specific plans no, of no how specific the Armenian plan. communities will be, benefited, no. will be benefiting. And have there been any new initiative at all you know, under under this government that would benefit the Amerindian communities? No, there's no new initiative so far as I know. Mm -hmm. All the program that is they are talking about is the initiative under the PPP civil government. Mm -hmm. There is no new initiative. Okay. Sure. Yeah, there's something they're continuing. Like. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just like they, they're just changing the name and just continuing all the time. Okay. It's and, not new. Okay. And still not continuing no. the way that no. they yeah, should. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. not doing the work they're supposed to. Okay. Now, I want us to change gears a bit. I want us to talk now about what is currently taking place at the National Tushal Conference. Um, we've been hearing um, some feedback about... Um, government ministers not listening and Amerindian leaders being uh, lectured to. Tell us exactly what is happening and how this year's uh, Tusho conference is being conducted right now. Well, so far the NTC is being, I uh, should say, going in line with the government. Why I say that? Because they're, they're limiting the Tusho from raising the issues mm -hmm. and giving more time for the government ministers, a long speeches, mm -hmm. not only for the benefit of our community, but reviewing what they did in four years. So they're giving them some long time to talk, to lecture to us what they did within four years. And when it's time for us to raise, then the NTC chair would say, time, time is against us. I see. Time is against us. How, so, so it's like they're, camp are, are they campaigning? Yes, it's a campaigning. Yeah. Uh, so to me, uh -huh. this NTC in October was set in line with the government, so that the campaigning mm -hmm. can happen because during this time. Because you mentioned before too that this conference is late. Yes, it's, it's supposed, supposed to be to in July. In July. July, right? yeah, July. Where we should have been in a better position mm -hmm. to share our issues. Now, last, not last, yesterday was a whole day lecturing by the government ministers, and no time for us. And the NTC, NTC executive, I won't be afraid to say that, NTC executive is trying to limit us okay. from hearing our views. And asking us to write it in letter. So how many time, how many letters have we sent? Mm -hmm. They have been sent, they have been sent. Right. But up to now, no response, and still asking us to write letter to be responded, we don't know when. So they don't want the issues to be publicized? No. But that's, that defeats the whole purpose of the conference, yeah. um, Shalom, because it's for the, it's for the Toshos and for the representatives and the leaders to make their presentations yes. on behalf of their, their communities. Yes, and I, for me, right, I, I think a conference is where the two show came from the different villages yeah. to sit down and discuss the matters that are affecting the people in the community. Because me as a representative, I, I didn't come to Georgetown just to line. Yeah. I come for a reason. reason. Mm -hmm. So okay. when I go back, I don't want to go back with promises to tell my people. Mm -hmm. I want to go and tell them facts. Mm -hmm. You know, this is in store for us, but this, this is my first 
first um, conference here, mm -hmm. and it was real strange. Because on the first day when I reached my hotel where I stay in, um, I received a bag with an invitation from the opposition leader yeah. that on Monday afternoon will be a dinner mm -hmm. at, at his office. So we prepare for all of you know the occasions. Right. That was the first invitation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that was the fourth. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, while everyone was taking lunch, uh, the CDOs for different um, districts were just passing wrong invitation, giving people invitation now. This was the government's invitation? Yes, yeah. the government invitation mm -hmm. for the Monday afternoon. So they had, at least for me, I was confused. Mm -hmm. Because I know every, every two-show conference, the opposition do something for the leaders and the president do something and it don't be they don't clash. They don't clash right. yeah. uh -huh. So I would call a, a boycott. They try yeah. to boycott the opposition, mm -hmm. right? To get the to shop to go at the president. Mm -hmm. And next thing, on the day of the the chairman, Mr. Frederick, yeah. he stated that everyone have to jump in the bus and go to the president. Now he's dictating for us. Okay. He's telling us as big people where we, we should go. Mm -hmm. We as pe big, you know, we as leaders, we should know where to go. You know, you don't have to mention those things. And I saw it in the in the newspaper. I read it, mm -hmm. and it's it's disrespect for the leaders. I feel disrespect. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it, this is not a conference. This is what all they planned this. Mm -hmm. this, they planned it. They planned it so nice. It's come as a campaign. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the campaigning. And if if the other two show they are not observing, I observing a lot yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. As for this, you see, you see this? Yes. It's green. I was going to ask about that. Yes. Yeah. This is green. Uh -huh. This is the party color. Mm -hmm. The next thing, they give us Green shirt. NTC green shirt. NTC wears NTC supposed to be yeah, a different neutral, color. Neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neutral, no party right. color. Mm -hmm. No, they give us green shirt. What they really telling us? You know, see, it's campaigning. They campaigning. Yeah. And I'm so disappointed by by, by the way they act. Mm -hmm. I'm so disappointed. And this, I have to go back to my community, and. Right. What what are you yeah. going to tell them when to you tell them like, exactly. you, know, you came yes. here as a representative yes. and you came here with your your issues and your agenda and the things that you want um, to report um, and to highlight so that you can go back and get to get these things resolved and go back and report to your communities. What will you go back and, and tell the persons who now are up, they're depending on you um, to come and resolve the I, issue? I have to tell them we went to like a campaign a campaign. <laughs> Because election is near, yeah. um, and the, the the next thing, right? Jo um, the few minutes, I raised my concern as the CDC chair. Uh -huh. Since we, since Bartica become a town, mm -hmm. Dog Point never get access to no help, none at all. Mm -hmm. No water, no light, no road, no bridge. There are numerous letters that I did and no response. I follow up, follow up, follow up, nothing. Mm -hmm. And that was the response I was waiting on to hear if there will be any... Any plans. Yeah, any yeah. plans for us. Mm -hmm. Because this is too long, we are waiting and waiting and there's nothing. And when election time near to come, they're going to visit us mm -hmm. and make promises like what they did before. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this time now, yeah. I think we should be wise as people of Guyana. And we are the ones that, you know, they, they will come and, especially to the Amerindian people, they would come and say, Amerindian, yes, let me fool them. But no, I don't, I don't think this time they would fool the people no more. Because the things that they promise, they never show up, they never visit, they never do nothing. And I think as people of this country, we should choose and know who to put in there, exactly. right? And as for me, I would encourage my people, let, let us put people who could 
do things for us because we need help. Not mm -hmm. everything we could do on our own. Yeah. We don't have the like the like the um like the excavator. We don't have things like we could maintain our roads. We don't have the equipment to build our bridge. We do self help, yes. Mm -hmm. But when couple mind up this man but but that is the government's responsibility, the government yes. of the day. And instead of addressing the conference and, and listening to, to the complaints and the issues of the Amerindian um, community, um, they, they're not listening as a government. No. They're there as a party, party. Which, which, is, which is completely unheard of and, and inappropriate. Um, I just want to make a statement. The, last year, the NTC Secretariat mm -hmm. said we make a neutrality statement. Right. Yeah, that's the statement they use. The NTC mm -hmm. said that Tusha must be neutral. They mustn't involve in politics, mustn't go within. But when I see Tuesday morning the NTC executive with their green jerseys and telling us where to go and where not mm -hmm. to go, as she mentioned when, when there's a clash between the reception, mm -hmm. if you see the NTC executive and the um, staff of the Minister of Indigenous Affairs pushing the two shops and the bus to go to Prime Minister like a little children, as if they're going to lose somewhere. I wow. stood up there, they come to me, I say, I'm going my, my way. Mm -hmm. I just watch at them. Two shops. Pushing to and the boss, they have to go to Prime Minister and um, President. And not, not all of the, the leaders will, will be as strong no. as you are to, to stand no. up and I just wait and, and wait for my up. own transportation and make my way out. Mm -hmm. So that is how, that is what I'm saying. The NTC is going moving along with the government closely. Mm -hmm. And the statement they make every every day in their statement, anybody so is observant. Also have, you also have a struggle with the council. Yeah, I, I don't say it on the executive. Mm -hmm. But the, um, you know the executive, I think, is is going along with the government, right. closely along with the government. They're not mm -hmm. neutral. I w I would support it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that, that is what I observe in the con the conference, conference right now. Yeah. Okay. They're going in the favor of the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever this, they as what I said, right? Those these people already plan. Plan. What, they plan these things. Mm -hmm. So they go in according to their plan. As a matter of fact, the government hijacked the NTC. That's what they're going to do. That, right. and that, one thing, one time is running out. Yeah. One thing, they give us a constitution book, mm -hmm. and the Minister of Legal Affairs asks us to read and understand the book. How the can he? Yeah, of Guyana. How can he expect the Amerindians to understand the book? So what I would tell him now uh -huh. in front would say, let him read and read and read Article One or Six until he understands it. But they right. also didn't understand no. the constitution, and, and they so they had to go to CCJ for to, to, interpretation. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and still, I think now they can't understand the judgment no. either. So they so we're, we're back to square one. Yeah. Um, so any um, anything before we, we close? Any closing comments? Let's start with you. Yes, Angela. for me and the Minister of Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yesterday his speech on the forest day. Uh, I can't remember the name of the person, but he stand and said no pol political issue. Mm -hmm. So as the two shall go along with the with the rules, on yesterday that was a rule that yeah, before the conference yes, started. Yes, rule started. on the on the opening. Mm -hmm. On yesterday, now the minister of infrastructure, he started to talk politics. Politics, yeah. Captain. He break the own rule. Yeah. Uh -huh. He is the head, and he breaks the rule. Well, that is a hallmark of 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 the the coalition. You know, they are the yeah. ones that that break the rule, they want to make the rules, and they want to break their own rules? This, this conference is an NTC, National Tushar Conference. Tushar. It's not a government conference. Correct. Right. Yeah. So they are there to listen to us, to, to the people. Yeah, yes. Not to lecture us. And my next comment is, he speaks about solar, 600 solars, where that, there's, that is a lie. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be 6,000 solar. solars. Yes. He said, and bare solar without no batteries. No nothing. batteries, nothing. Okay. Bare solar, they took over. Mm -hmm. And all gone up to this place. My, my Kobe. My right? Kobe. My Kobe. Mm -hmm. So, you see, he speaks. So, he the speaking, communities are not benefiting? Um, no community okay. benefiting. No community benefiting. No. It's only my Kobe, but I. You. We. And get any chance to ask questions. Yes. Right. Time are limited for us. Mm -hmm. So you you're not able to bring no. these no. things um, to the no. forefront. In this, would say region one, two. That's how it goes. Region one, seven. Uh -huh. No time for us to ask any questions. So it looked like we just warming seat all the time. Yeah. 
Maybe we come to have <laughs> vacation. Mm -hmm. Any other closing uh, comments, uh, Lee? Before we yes, I, I would tell my um, indigenous people, Amaranian people, mm -hmm. to make the right choice. We, we have seen the struggles since 2015, and let's not fall into that trap again. We have to make the right choice okay. the next 2020 election by putting the PPPC government into okay. office. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lee. Thank you very much, Sharan. Um, you've yeah. certainly enlightened us, and I hope at least you've had um, a chance um, to bring some of the issues um, to light. And for those of you who are watching, thank you very much um, for joining us. This was a very um, informative program, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.